I saw this funny TikTok video about the extinction of dinosaurs. It's a conversation between God and his angel. I can't tell all the details, so here's the vid. Hey God, what's up? Hey angel, did you give the dinosaurs more muscle, like I asked? What? I told you to make them meteor. Make them a meteor. 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 You guys might be asking, why did I show you that video? It is because that simple misunderstanding between the terms meteor and meteor is somehow related to our topic today, which is general semantics. Before we proceed, let us first recognize the learning objectives of this topic. First, to understand the three principles of general semantics, and second, to relate language and communication in the context of GenSem. Let me give you a short background of the big brains behind this concept. Wendell Johnson was severe stutterer no mga time when therapists thought that the disorder which arose from speech was directed by the wrong hemisphere of the brain. Nagsuot siya nun ng cast on his right arm for two years to be left-handed and to recover from his speech defect. Gumaling naman siya and then he headed the speech clinic at the University of Iowa. Alfred Korzybski, the main man of general semantics, is a Polish who was born in the family of scientists and engineers. Lumaki siya in a Polish home, went to a Russian school, and even participated on a French and German governess at yun yung reason kung bakit multilingual na agad siya nung bata pa lang. He served on the Russian intelligence and went back to the U.S. to study mental health. Sir so Irving Lee naman was immensely teacher of speech at Northwestern University. Samuel Ichie Hayakawa was a linguist, psychologist, semanticist, teacher, writer, and the acting president of San Francisco State University. These four men are the proponents of general semantics. Although it was Korsibsky who came up with the initial tenets, Johnson, Hayakawa, and Lee interpreted and popularized his ideas. Let us now define general semantics. Laging napagkakamalan ng theorists back then na parehas lang ang semantics and general semantics when they are in fact just related but greatly different. Semantics is the umbrella term for the logic concerned with meaning. Korsibsky called his theory general semantics because it deals with the nervous reactions of the human organism and is much more general and fundamental than the meanings of words. Simply put, general semantics is a discipline intended to improve the ways people interact with their environment or with one another, especially through training and the critical use of words and other symbols. Ginagamit ang general semantics as self-improvement for a therapy program and to regulate human mental habits and behaviors. That is the reason why Wendell Johnson managed to alleviate his stuttering. The concept of general semantics has also made notable use on presentations and arguments in law courts, um, counseling and psychotherapy, helping reading difficulties, etc. etc. Well, now you will find the value of etc. Moving on, although general semantics relies on empirical evidences, observation, documentation, part siya ng pseudoscience. Now, what is pseudoscience? Ano yung sakop ng pseudoscience? Pseudoscience are fields that are scientific and factual but are incompatible with the scientific method. Now, in order for me to know if you really are listening to this presentation, um, I have put uh, star icons on every slide of my PowerPoint except for three. Now, you will record the timestamps of the slides na walang star, and that will be the digits of the codes. Now, you will comment the codes on our Google Classroom, and kung sino yung unang makakakuha ng tamang code is makakakuha rin sa akin ng 20 peso load, kagaya ng kay Juliana. And yung mahuli naman is makikik sa Google Classroom natin. 
Next question to expound, what makes human human? So, dito na papasok yung bindings, bindings natin. Um, Korzybski labeled plants as chemical binders because they rely on photosynthesis to produce food. Um, he then labeled animals as Space binders because they move from, from one place to another in order to survive. And us human, Korzybski labeled us as time binders because we humans perform time binding by the transmission of knowledge and abstractions through time which became accredited in cultures. So, so from this generation to another, we tell stories and that is what we call time binding. Now, for our objectives and probably the main agenda of this topic, let us now discuss the three principles of general semantics. First, a map is not the territory. For Korzybski, words are only maps of reality. They are not the territory. Parang ginamit niyo yun as, you know, just symbols and representations of how to describe the world. He called this the principle of non-identity. Applied to daily life language, a word is not what it represents. Now, let's go back to my TikTok example. So, as you can see, the term meteor and meteor, nagkaroon doon ng misunderstanding si God and yung angel. And that misunderstanding caused a catastrophe. So, on our daily life, um, our misunderstanding on words can also cause catastrophe. It can cause um, a downfall of um, a business kagaya ng sinabi dun sa reading module natin. But words don't have a single meaning or an official interpretation. To wonder what a word means is to ask the wrong question. Dapat ang tanong natin sa kausap natin ay kung anong ibig sabihin niya sa sinabi niya. Because words don't mean things people do. The map can possibly be the territory because nature is in constant flux. Now, Korzybski provided ways naman to avoid equating the word with the thing. Um, he urged adding a mental etc. Yun yung tinutukoy kong value ng etc. On the end of each sentence to remind ourselves that there is always more to say. This concept is reflected sa title ng official journal of general semantics which is etc. General semanticists are also against the use of inclusive terms like all always, every, and entirely, because these terms imply that we already know everything which is wrong. Moreover, it was suggested that we put index on terms if we know that it is too general for a specific definition. This is to suggest that a word can mean something else. Now, the second principle. The map depicts only part of the territory. Applied to daily life and language, a word does not represent all of the facts, etc. One reason din why general semantics is known as non-Aristotelian is because it discredits some of Aristotle's beliefs. One example is when Aristotle claimed that a thing either is or it isn't. Well, tama naman siya at, at some point. But Korzybski discredited this. He thought that the exclusion of the middle ground is why life has many questions. The middle ground should be included. Korzybski offered suggestion to avoid absolutist thinking. First, use hyphen for concepts that seem to be opposed in language but are inseparable in nature. Like if pinapapili ka between rational or emotional, body or mind like that of Aristotle, you can answer a different term that is connected with a hyphen. Like, rational, emotional, connected with the hyphen. It creates a different meaning that is broader and more inclusive to suffice the question. Second, when presenting inferences that go beyond scientifically observable facts, Korzybski and others in the field suggest a number of phrases you can use to indicate that you are less than 100% certain. Like, it seems to me, um, I believe, I find it probable as I see it. Um, these terms uh, suggest that you don't know everything because, in fact, what we know is a drop and what we don't know is an ocean. Lastly, avoid categorical statements about personality. When describing someone like Taylor is mad, it is safer to say, my Taylor is mad. 
It may sound possessive, but it is more precise than the typical blanket judgment. For general semantics, sabi nga, tentativeness is in and absolutes are out. The last principle is map of maps condense the territory. Or, language is self-reflexive in the sense that in language, we can also speak about language. Korzybski described language as similarly self-reflexive. It's a it's possible to use words to talk about words, like what we're doing right now. The process involves recognizing similar features among things that are unique while ignoring their differences. To further support the last principle, Hayakawa, the Japanese inner form man, proposed what is called the abstraction ladder. To climb this abstraction ladder means to take a specific term and perceive it on different meaning as you go up. In the example of Hayakawa, the cow known to science as it moves up the abstraction ladder has evolved onto different terms. Hayakawa says that there comes a point in the abstraction ladder where the speaker and the listener no longer have a mental image of what they're talking about. The next step, though, is to descend the abstraction ladder in order to get closer to life on the verbal plane. Korzybski's mission in life was to raise both the speaker's and listener's consciousness of faulty assumptions on abstract words. Awareness of the difference between abstract words and reality is the first line of defense against semantic error. General semantics asks every listener to develop a scientific sensitivity. To do this, we can start by asking three questions to ourselves or to others. Like, what do you mean? How do you know? And what did you leave out? For in general semantics, words don't mean things and the map is not the territory. Now, how did this help in understanding the relationship between language and communication? Since general semantics point out that what is something for me might be something else for you or that words are not what it really represents, it can be inferred that language is a really complex and diverse field. When applied to communication though, these ambiguities in language is cleared because we use it in calm to share meaning. The uncertainties in communication is also erased because we use language to define realities. Separately, they are two complex fields, but together they both few well and define each other. So that's it for our general semantics discussion. I hope you learned something from this presentation. If you have questions about the topic, feel free to ask me on Messenger. And if you want to download the PowerPoint presentation I need, you can for browsing. That's it, guys. Thank you and peace out.